Israeli forces raiding Al Shifa Hospital have severely beaten Al Jazeera journalist Ismail Al Ghul. He was covering the military's attack with colleagues when he was dragged away. Satellite trucks belonging to the press crews there were also destroyed by Israeli forces. This news coming into us. Uh, just in the last few minutes, we can go straight to our correspondent, Hani Mahmoud, who is on the ground for us in Rafa in southern Gaza. What can you tell us, uh, Hani, about these latest developments uh, regarding our Al Jazeera journalist at Al Shifa Hospital? Yeah. Hani, Hani, if you can hear me, Hani, if you can hear me, uh, we are... Yes, yes, I do. Yes, yeah, yes, so please, yes. we're, so I, we're I getting these now, reports. Now, well, yes. We're getting these reports about Israeli forces raiding Al Shifa Hospital and severely beating up one of Algeria, uh, Al Jazeera's own journalists, Ismail Al Ghul. What are you hearing? Yes, Melian, that's, that happened within the past couple hours where uh, emerging reports of, from a Shifa hospital and uh, uh, Israeli military has already de detained over 80 people, including women and young men from a Shifa hospital and medical staff as well and injuries who are supposed to be inside the hospital getting treated, uh, including also a, our colleague Ismail al from Al Jazeera uh, and his crew member on the ground has been covering the ongoing a genocidal war and the ongoing Israeli att military attacks and atrocities uh, on the ground. What we were told by an eyewitness inside the hospital that Ismail and his uh, crew member uh, were actually uh, beaten and were verbally abused and dehumanized basically before they were uh, and tortured before they were led into the un unknown uh, area. It's important also to point out that this really military bulldozer did in fact destroy uh, the equipment uh, of Ismail and his crew on the ground, including the SNG that uh, helped uh, transmitting uh, signals uh, from the ground to the studio. Uh, that's what's going on right now in, in a Shifa hospital, including the other 80 plus people who were uh, detained from uh, the hospital. It's also a, a part of the ongoing uh, military attacks on a Shifa hospital as people were are being told to leave and evacuate the facility with the exception of the ICU team. Uh, but as people tried to leave the facility, they were shot at by the quad captors and surveillance drone, and they have machine guns at the vicinity uh, of the hospital, which led to the death of many people on the ground. We don't know, we don't have a confirmation number of how many people were killed, but as an eyewitness described, they are scattered at the courtyard uh, of, the, uh, of the hospital, and that's part of the evacuation order that has been largely misleading, confusing for people. They were told to leave, but at the same time, they were uh, shot at. In an earlier statement, uh, the spokesperson of the Israeli military described the, the operation as limited and precise and no evacuation required. And now we're seeing these leaflets ordering people sharply to evacuate the facility. And, Hani, I believe this is the fourth time that Israeli forces have stormed Al Shifa. Just remind us uh, why exactly uh, Al Jazeera journalist Ismail Al Ghul was there. What were the circumstances around the uh, raid earlier this morning? Mm -hmm. Well, just let's be clear about what's going on in Gaza and the northern part. Not only there is a spread of famine and catastrophic situation, but the vast majority of people there do not have their homes is standing where they can uh, stay in. So the vast majority of people uh, refer to a Shifa hospital and, as it turned into a large uh, evacuation center for the thousands and hundreds of displaced families and evacuees uh, inside the, the hospital. So likely what Israel was doing is covering uh, the uh, what's going on inside the hospital in terms of the catastrophic medical situations, the inability of the hospital to operate, as well as the 
uh, the ongoing uh, tsunami of injuries being transferred and reported to a Shifa hospital from the ongoing attacks across uh, Gaza City and the northern part. Uh, we've seen within the past a few days uh, uh, where uh, atrocities committed either on the Rashid Road or on Salahuddin Road, or particularly on aid seekers, uh, where hundreds of injuries arrived to the hospital. But the fact that the hospital is not operational is catastrophic, and part of it is covering what's going on, and the other part is sheltering inside the hospital as there are no places to stay in across Gaza and the northern part. Hani, can you tell us a little more about uh, this journalist, Ismail Al Ghul? He was an Al Jazeera Arabic uh, journalist, I believe, and had been covering the war in Gaza for the last few months. What more can you tell us about him? Well, one, one quite visible thing about Ismail that he continued covering the atrocities and the, the genocidal war and practices on the ground within the past months and, and since the expansion of the, the ground invasion and uh, oftentimes bearing the, uh, the catastrophe of the spread of famine, including a couple of reports that he did on, on the situations where he described the difficult living conditions of people, including himself and the crew member on the ground, as going with uh, uh, on going on with days without any food or or a meal, just to keep them uh, sustainable and and continuing uh, the work. Part of it, the the documentation of the, the the massacres, whether it's the flower massacre on the Kota Road or the destruction of entire residential building in the northern part of the Strip. Uh, and Gaza City and the, the, the attacks on a Zaytun uh, neighborhood within the, the, the past uh, couple weeks. Uh, he continued the work despite the, the challenges and the, the hardship created by the ongoing intense bombing campaign, including the engineered famine that has pretty much uh, affected everyone negatively. So far, we're looking at least 27 people who died of this enforced dehydration and starvation uh, uh, in, uh, in Gaza and the northern part. Uh, Hani, for our viewers that are just joining us, I just want to remind them uh, about this breaking news that we are reporting on. Israeli forces who raided Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza have severely beat Al Jazeera journalist Ismail Al Ghul. That has been confirmed to us uh, in the last few minutes. Uh, so, going back to what you know, uh, so he was with a colleague, I believe, and he had a satellite truck with him. Uh, do we know what's happened to the truck, to, to his colleague, or was it, was it just Ismail who was targeted? No, not only is, is, is our colleague Ismail and his and the crew member in the ground, but also the the equipment, the the, the truck that they have, they, they're using to move around and to carry out the, the 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 equipment, the transmission equipment from one place to another have been, uh, according to an eyewitness inside the hospital, have been uh, destroyed completely as uh, the, uh, the military bulldozer just ran it over uh, and completely destroyed all the equipment that they were using inside the the courtyard uh, of the hospital, which makes it very difficult right now for the, the sustainability of the of the coverage uh, it had uh, Ismail been uh, not detained. But so far, what we're getting that Ismail was uh, detained and his crew member, they were verbally abused, they were dehumanized, they were beaten severely before they were taken to undisclosed areas along with the 80 other people who were uh, detained from the courtyard of the hospital. Right. I understand, uh, as you were saying, more than 80 people have been detained uh, as a result of that raid uh, at Al Shifa Hospital, including medical staff, as well as uh, many of the people that were sheltering there. Uh, and uh, as we are reporting, Al Jazeera, uh, Al Jazeera Arabic colleague Ismail Al Ghul and his crew, who were also sheltering inside that hospital, were detained. He was also beaten. Uh, before being taken to an undisclosed location. Uh, Hani, do we know any more about why this raid took place? Have the Israelis said anything?
Well, as the uh, the operation uh, started, uh, there was a statement made by the Israeli military, and with the with the list of uh, allegations, and a primary among the the, the 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 list is the the fact that based on intelligence information on the ground uh, gathered by the internal security and the military intelligence, the, the presence. Uh, talking about the presence of, of Hamas members and, and uh, operative inside the hospital. And uh, the statement went on that this operation was going to be precise and limited. And uh, the, the army was advised, the, uh, the army was advised to not to harm civilians and no evacuations uh, was required. But so far, since the beginning of the operation, what we're seeing as the Israeli military moved into the hospital, it uh, surrounded the entire facility and it stormed it uh, with its uh, armored vehicles and tanks and bulldozer. One building uh, was set on fire due to the uh, intense bombing of, of the tank shells, as well as the use of a quadcopter. These are the kind of attack drones uh, uh, that they can maneuver uh, everywhere, including inside the, the, the facility itself. Uh, the, there's a great deal of, 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 of terror going on inside the hospital as the vast majority of people, we're talking about thousands of evacuees, uh, hundreds of uh, entire families counted uh, have been sheltering inside uh, the hospital, uh, including also the medical staff as well as the injuries who are uh, inside the hospital and barely, barely are making it through the day given the fact that there's no medical supplies or, or sufficient medical staff to treat them or save their, their lives. So the, the situations are getting pretty much very difficult right now. Uh, uh, but so far, the Israeli military did not issue any statement to support the allegations that were made at earlier statement. All what we know that this operation was meant for whatever it, it has cataloged so far, but no substantial evidence whatsoever to support these allegations. And, Hani, uh, one of the reasons that Al Jazeera has continued to cover tirelessly through this entire war is because of uh, the, the reporting of journalists like Ismail al Ghul, uh, who are Palestinian, of course. Uh, we've also had Tariq Abu Azum, another one of our correspondents who's been targeted by the Israelis. Tell us a bit more, uh, give us some, some wider context here about how journalists continue to be targeted in Gaza. Well, Melina, we've seen since the beginning of this genocidal war, and it's pretty clear to everyone that there are no terms and no limits to what the Israeli military can do across the Gaza Strip, from the intense bombing campaign to the mass killing and the mass slaughter of civilians, the bombing of entire families inside their residential uh, buildings. And, and right now, what we've seen is a systematic attacks on, on journalists and people who are reporting uh, from the ground and, and the reporting the ongoing atrocities, the massacres, the sheer level of destruction caused by uh, by the uh, the Israeli military, uh, it's it's beyond imagination. We have entire uh, residential blocks and areas that are beyond recognition right now, given the fact that it has been bombed in, in within uh, relentlessly and been destroyed severely. Uh, and the vast majority of buildings right now and infrastructure, public facilities, either destroyed completely or severely damaged. All of this, Al Jazeera has been able to capture. Uh, all the vast majority of these atrocities and destruction on the ground and and the fact that there are people still continuing to do this is something that is causing a great deal of of, of frustration uh, to the Israeli military because it always refutes all the allegations and the, the made up claims of the existence of, of people who are either wanted or these places have been housing tunnels or bunkers. And we've seen this example being refuted publicly as the, in early December when the Israeli military stormed at Shifa hospital and eventually it was only a couple of videos that were released by the military but shows no substantial evidence to support any of the allegations that was that were made and justified the storming uh, of a Shifa hospital. Same thing happened at Nasser Hospital and other health public facilities and private clinics as well, as well as educational facilities. All of this has been captured on the camera and been broadly refuted 
by the people who did the documentations and the reporting on these ongoing atrocities. And that's something that the Israeli military wants somehow to put a muzzle on and, and to stop it from continuing. And, honey, uh, just to recap, uh, while this uh, has happened at Al Shifa Hospital, I mean, it, it's an ongoing situation. There are still strikes going on elsewhere in Gaza. Yes, airstrike continued to pound across the Gaza Strip, but mainly right now concentrated in Gaza City, where we're looking at a very nearby neighborhood, a remote neighborhood, once a thriving, bustling market, a neighborhood in the heart of Gaza City, been destroyed and turned into a pile of ruins. Remaining residential buildings and, uh, and department stores have been destroyed with intense air bombardment within the past hours, including major roads leading and connecting Gaza City with the northern part that includes Al Jalat Road and Nasser Road, as well as Omar Mukhtar Street connecting eastern part of Gaza City with the western part. Uh, where there are reports of uh, entire residential buildings been targeted within the past couple hours <laughs> with displaced families inside. And given how dangerous the situation right now, with the presence of attack drones, there is a clear inability of the civil defense crew members on the ground, the, uh, the paramedics to get to these areas and help remove those who might have survived the attacks. But so far, it has been hours since the, the house were leveled to the ground, these houses leveled to the ground. And it's likely that most people in their rubbles won't make it. OK, Hani Mahmoud, uh, we will leave it there. I just want to recap this breaking news to you. Uh, if you're just joining us, Israeli forces that have raided Al-Shifa Hospital, we've been reporting on this all morning, have severely beat Al Jazeera journalist Ismail Al Ghul. He was working for Al Jazeera Arabic. He and his colleagues were covering the attack of Al Shifa when he was dragged away, and the satellite truck, which which belonged to the press crew that he was with, was also destroyed by Israeli forces. So we don't know where he is now. But as soon as we have any more information on this, we will, of course, bring it to you. And uh, just, to, just to reference the pictures you're seeing on the screen, that is indeed uh, Ismail al -Ghul. Uh, We had him on our uh, screens yesterday when he was reporting on the humanitarian aid that had made its way into northern Gaza.